Very pleasant. Good evening and welcome to Small Biz Florida with Mr. Tom Kendrick. Thank you, sir. And welcome to another segment and installment of Small Biz Florida, the podcast and broadcast. That's all things business across the Treasure Coast and the entire state of Florida. Small Biz Florida is brought to you by the Florida Small Business Development Center Network and is produced by the Florida SBDC right here at Indian River State College. Small Biz Florida is designed and produced to highlight and promote business assistance, celebrate entrepreneurial success, present best practices, and most importantly, provide timely business information for Florida's small business community. I am Tom Kindred, your host for Small Biz Florida, and uh, currently serve the community and the college as the regional director for the Florida SBDC. I am also a uh, former small business owner myself, just like Greg and Carol Wyatt. Right? We are. <laughs> yes, you own this. Uh, you own this broadcasting empire, Greg. No, Carol does. <laughs> I just, I'm just, kinda, you just, you just work here. I just, I just kind of hang it out. Right. Um, so how, how are things, Greg? Everything's good in, uh, in the well. radio world, Doing WPSL, actually, WSTU. And the, things are exploding all of a sudden at, yes. at both radio stations. It's really good. Uh, it's like, you know, it's really weird the last three weeks. It's like um, with a lot of things, everybody wants to get out, as you saw at right. that ballpark, you yeah. know, when Coach was honored. And um, we were at the Port St. Lucie Business Women Fashion Show. And um, place was packed. Doggone it! Did I miss Absolutely that again? Packed. We'll have to drag you in there. I know. I to wanted to go this year. 50, we were going. Well, tickets. we were going to. That's right. I could have helped you do that. We were going to broadcast live from this year's uh, fashion show. It's, it was amazing. Where's it held on at Ballantrae? It, it was at Ballantrae. Yeah, nice, nice. And um, uh, Carol just gave me a report, and um, they made a lot of money. Nice. So well, good for it, them. yeah, good. and yeah. Yeah, and it's just a lot of stuff, like uh, our arrangement with the Miami Marlins for, uh, they call it a fantasy experience, right? People get down, get to go to the batting practice, sit in the dugout, stuff nice. like that. And as it's turned out, this has been won 15 times by a Martin County Sheriff's deputy wow. and his four Martin County Sheriff's buddies. <laughs> and I'll be darned oh. if he didn't win it again. Wow. And it raised, uh, oh gosh, almost 400 bucks for the wow. business women. It was great. Nice. And you've got the new mag there. Yeah. I was just going to, going to, uh, point out again, um, the latest issue of Treasure Coast business is on the streets. Now really cool, really cool issue. Um, uh, we dedicated this issue to leaders to watch across the treasure coast. There's, um, 16, uh, very interesting, uh, involved, engaged, uh, dedicated, uh, folks on the cover. Uh, it really interesting to read. I, I loved, I really did as, as we were putting things together after they were selected, I really enjoyed reading, uh, some of their comments and, and, uh, answers to the, to the questions. And so anyway, there's, uh, there's some faces. If you're, if you've been around these parts for a while, like I have been, uh, there's some faces you'll absolutely immediately recognize, but you know what? There's some folks I didn't, uh, know, and it's, it's nice to see uh, young folks coming up and taking on leadership roles across uh, the community So, and across the Treasure Coast. So anyway, a great addition, a great issue. Uh, make sure you, you try to find, a, find one. And if you, don't, if you can't find it, uh, I always uh, tell you my commitment is I'll bring you one. Call me and let me know. Um, with that, I want to... Uh, turn to our guest uh, this evening, our first guest this evening, really one of my, my favorite SBDC consultants, one of my favorite SBDC programs. Uh, we talk about this quite often uh, at the SBDC, being really one of the most valuable programs. And again, they're, they're all valuable. Government contract is extremely important. And, and now we have a manufacturing specialist, which is important. But I'll tell you, this this uh, our international trade program and export marketing uh, tool is, is really something unique and special across the state of Florida. And the young lady that um, that is the, the point of contact for this program and uh, a brilliant uh, international trade strategist 
uh, is our own Emily McHugh. Welcome to Small Biz Florida. Again, Emily, you've been on a number of times to talk about the program, but welcome back. Thanks, Tom. Happy to be on with you today. Yes, we appreciate it. I love talking about this program. So um, let's just start as we always do. Emily, kind of just give us a little bit of your background because it, it is interesting and kind of your pathway uh, to becoming the international trade specialist for the Florida SBDC here at Indian River State College. Well, in a nutshell, my background can be summarized in the one word of being international and global. Yes. I was almost born on a plane, by the way. So I was either born on one <laughs> continent or another or in right. the middle of the air. Okay. But the good Lord saw fit that I was born actually in Cambridge, England. And so my first air ride on a plane was at two months old to the U.S. And my trajectory has been ever since involved in some kind of international capacity. So I majored in foreign languages in school and I worked in international banking uh, when I graduated. So I worked for a French bank in New York and in Mexico City and specifically specializing in international trade finance. So it was all about financing with letters of credit and all these types of um, finance tools and foreign exchange uh, trading type back office work with regard to um, trade, facilitating trade. And so with that being said, after that, I did my MBA in New York at Columbia and then started my own business. And when I started my own business, Kasori, that got launched me onto the manufacturing side where I actually would travel to Asia with frequency, visiting factories, selecting factories, and the whole supply chain, setting up distribution for our products and so forth. So I kind of have a 360 degree appreciation of what in, is involved in trade. And now with the SBDC in a consulting capacity, helping other companies do similar things and understand the vagaries, if you will, or the vicissitudes of trade, and especially in light of our current environment with all the geopolitical challenges that adds another dimension as well to understand, to better navigate the environment we're in nice and, and again i always appreciate uh appreciate your background and, and and your experience in this in this international trade space um you know i i had really kind of forgotten you had worked in the area of, of kind of international finance did you ever did you ever do any deals with the Exim bank uh emily did you ever had a, an occasion to to work with with that institution no, not where I was. I was more focused on the commercial, corporate commercial banking per se, whereas Exim Bank does uh, provide trade finance insurance for um, people who are ex companies who are exporting that they can, the U.S. government will actually cover your invoice value in the event of a default on payment to you. So it's a, it's a, a tool that encourages U.S exporters to export knowing that you'll be paid so it's really a great program but it's like kind of like a trade insurance program and i have never heard of that yes we well That's i did wild. i just the, the, the only reason i know about it is we did a rather large uh, export deal uh when i was in the equipment business and it was all run through the uh, exim bank so wow um, yes. so, okay wow yeah. interesting institution and, um and one a really cool thing yeah, to understand about the Exim Bank, by the way, it's not really a bank. Right. <laughs> so they call themselves a bank, but they're not really a bank. People go to them for money. They don't give money, but they will grant these insurance policies as people apply for them if they qualify. Yep. All right. Um, let's talk about, uh, you know, international trade uh, in general, Emily. What, what I like about uh, your program, what I like about government contracting is these, to me, these are opportunities for revenue expansion and growth. So if you've, you know, if you've been in business for a while, you've, uh, you know, you've kind of really, um, you know, you, you're, you're good at what you do, you, you found your niche, um, but you're looking maybe to expand and grow. What I really like about those two, um, uh, you know, those two business strategies and models is, is that they do offer 
a, a totally new revenue stream, potentially new revenue stream, opportunities for expansion. If, if you're not engaged in international trade or you're not selling your product overseas, you're not engaged in government contracting, they really can be uh, a very beneficial, uh, uh, you know, new revenue stream for a business. Is that, is that kind of a fair statement about, uh, you know, a business looking at, uh, at international trade and, and government contracting, for instance? Yes, absolutely. So the statistics say that, well, 95% of the population of the world is outside of the U.S. and 80% of the customers are outside of the U.S. So if you could do it 80% more business or actually way more than 80% more business, <laughs> then internet, it's, a, it's almost an obvious next step. And it's, I'm hard pressed to find, think of businesses that cannot benefit from international trade, regardless of the size, you don't have to be some big mega corporation. And I encourage people to think internationally from day one. Day one, when you start out, you can be a global business. So it's a mindset as well. And in, in today with the technology being as it is, with e-commerce as it is, you can be a global business day one. Yeah, and I, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I mean, it, it really, you know, in most small businesses, you don't think of yourself as being this um, international global business, but really, with technology, that's really changed that whole, um, you know, the whole strategy there. You, you're basically an international player from day one with a website. Is that, is that a fair statement? That's absolutely true. And I can attest that just this week, I received an order on my website from Monaco. So why can I tell you? Right. <laughs> Here we are in little old Fort Clears. <laughs> and so it's, it's the thing is that, um, yeah, there's there are really no barriers as long as there are no trade embargoes in place or no blacklisted countries, then you can sell to any country in the world barring those exceptions. Okay. So now, Emily, do you do you list one of your branch offices now in Monaco for your business? No, I, I, <laughs> I would like to say so. No, but I we were found online. I mean, they did a wow. search. They found us online, and actually, they bought from us many years before. So it's it's kind of like the small world of the internet brings you together with people that you would have never thought you could do business with but you can. So again, it's about having a global mindset and realizing that there are many layers and different types of opportunities to pursue. So you should never limit yourself to think that it's either out of reach or if you're currently involved in international trade, that there are other, there, there are other components or aspects of it that you could explore as well. So there's always room for growth regardless of where you are on the spectrum. See, she's got to do that though. She's yeah. got to put that on her letterhead. That's right. You you know, I had Fort Pierce and Monaco. <laughs> you know, <laughs> see, I thought it had a nice ring to it myself. Hey, right, it works. Right. <laughs> hey, so Emily, talk to us about your specific role at the SBDC here at Indian River State College, and then the process for a business to get engaged with you, and then what what can you do to help that business kind of examine uh, the international trade uh, potential. So in my capacity as an international trade consultant specialist here at the SBDC, my objective is to assist our local businesses who want to explore international opportunities, expand internationally, or evaluate an opportunity they may have. So again, regardless of where they are in the, the process of looking into this, if they're new to the market or just wanting to find out what, how to approach it, where to start, uh, they can reach out to me to explore that with him, with them. I can have a consulting session to see where, where they are. So just basically questions and orientation. If you just need a quick overview orientation of what might be some options for you that pertain to your particular company that could benefit you, then we'll look at that precisely. Um, in a bigger picture now, beyond that, that's the bigger picture rather, to more narrow it down, we do have the Export Marketing Plan Program, the EMP which is in conjunction with the uh, Enterprise Florida, our Department of Commerce for the state of Florida, as well as the U.S. Department of Commerce, uh, U.S. Commercial Services, which help 
American companies expand overseas. And this program is an in-depth market intelligence research project to identify the best countries or most appropriate countries for you to export to if you're relatively new to exporting or want to refine your export strategy as well and in these countries and also make recommendations as, potent, uh, as to potential opportunities in those markets. And with that, you, not only do you get this plan, this is extensive plan, but you receive a complimentary gold key, which is a program with the US Commercial Service, which is part of the US Department of Commerce that um, it's kind of like a matchmaking program with countries, companies and countries overseas. So let's say that your export marketing plan recommended that Spain was a good country for you. We will then connect with the U.S. Embassy in Madrid and have them research potential customers that you could connect with. And then you would go there and meet them or do it virtually. So that's an, a an example of the kind of reach that we have here on in this program. And, and who are who are the partners that you work with? It's an impressive, you know, it's an impressive collaboration. Who are the partners that support you and you work with, collaborate with on that EMP program? Well, the, so the three partners, so the SBDC, which we're the entity that produces, actually does does the work and create the, the, the plan. Then we have Enterprise Florida with the state of Florida. And then we have at the, at the state level. And then at the federal level, we have the U.S. Commerce Department, the U.S. Commercial Services the, um, entity in particular that, that we collaborate with. And we work very closely with all of these, these entities. They're great partners and I have a great relationship. And not only that, not only with the EMP, but sometimes companies overseas want to connect with companies here locally. And say my contact at the Department of Commerce will reach out to me and say, Emily, can you connect with this company in Stewart or in Vera Beach or Fort Pierce? Um, because we have a company in Fiji that's interested in doing business with them. So it can, it can go both ways. Right. And again, you're part of, so you, you've got collaborators and partners at the federal and state level, Enterprise Florida, U.S. Department of Commerce. You've also got collaborators right here within uh, the SBDC at IRSC. So you're working and focused on uh, identifying countries, identifying markets, building this export marketing plan, while, uh, say, Leanna Haig, our digital media specialist, could be working with them on uh, implementing some action strategies to update websites, uh, make their website, um, you know, more, um, uh, you know, meeting some, some goals of yours in that EMP. Uh, is that, I mean, you, you've got all kinds of resources really to bring together to, to put this plan together. Is that, is that a fair statement? Yeah, absolutely. So we call on all the resources available to us. So I've worked closely with Linda Gonzalez, who's helped me a lot with research. And Linda has been a great source. Lin, um, Leanna also does great work with her um, contribution regarding the digital side. So when it comes to an export marketing strategy, having a digital strategy is at the core of that, because that's how people find you. Like I mentioned before about how people found my business, they find you on Google or wherever they look. And so having those keywords in place are critical. So one of the things that I do is I research, um, understand really what the industry is called, because sometimes it's not so obvious, and the different names that it can be called. And then Leanna kind of runs with some of those names and then comes up with others from her research. And the whole idea is to have a proactive versus a reactive strategy. That is what this is all about. So you can kind of drive your own pipeline as opposed to just sitting and waiting for people to call you. You can um, put in place, optimize your website with the correct words that can help them find you. And then not only that, once you focus on the countries that are specific to your markets, then optimize for those countries. And if it's, if it's a foreign language company, con, con, foreign language, then that might be another dimension. So it, there are many layers to this process. Yeah, and, and I have know. The yeah, and then again, I think once once all this is completed uh, for the client, 
then there's other resources, are there not, that trade uh, trips and uh, exposure through state agencies uh, abroad? Is, is that all part of this too? Yes. Yeah, so that, that's why it's a, it's a, it's a multi-layered access point. So by taking advantage of the WS, the SBDC resources right here in your backyard, you have access to the world. We are a gateway to the world, to many other resources, as you mentioned before, XM Bank. We have great relations with them. We have relationships with the SBA. Um, there are um, working capital loans for exports specifically that people can access. So there are so many different dimensions here. And it's I don't think people realize what is available to them for little to no cost. I mean, the consulting is at no cost to them, but the EMP is at a nominal cost. It's a grant-based pro program. And so I would encourage people to really explore and have the conversation to see if there are opportunities they could be overlooking just by sheer virtue of not realizing that they're there. With the transportation problems we've had since the pandemic, um, is that kind of a wrinkle that um, companies have to kind of assume that we're going to have for at least a couple of years? Well, it's always a very critical component of the exporting equation, the, the ability to actually get product where it needs to go and to receive the product. And it will always be a part of the equation. And it's even more so now as things, the challenges we've had, not only with the whole COVID, but now with the geopolitical challenges on top of that. So there's all people are always looking for safe routes, better routes, faster routes to, or dependable and reliable routes to get um, product to and fro. But the good news is that there are great freight uh, and logistics companies that are working on these challenges so that the company itself doesn't have to sit there and try to solve all these things th themselves. You want to partner with a great freight forwarder, an excellent, um, a good freight forwarding company if you're starting to do that level of transaction. And depending on what you're shipping, it could be by air or what have you, but still, I always recommend a good freight forwarding partner that can help guide you through the logistical challenges. And so. you guys are connected to them? We're connected to the world. Did I not say we're the gateway to the world? <laughs> I have... We are connected to everybody. Fear not, Greg. We we can connect people with whoever they need to connect with. Right. For sure. Greg, did or you not hear? Gateway to the world. Point them in the right direction. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to sell my widgets to Iran. I'm sorry. That's, uh, oh. Hey, um, now I yeah. I, I think it's I think it's no, also absolutely. I think it's and, also and, and it's ahead. a it's a good question because yes, we do have resources. No, oh, I think we had a little bit of a delay. No, I was just saying that we can point people in the right in a good right direction and let them know no one will be left hanging with any information they need. And I guess it is, I want to make sure now that we sort of make clear one issue. <clears throat> You'll help any business, any size, any industry with international trade strategies. That EMP program. And, and again, you you tell me, uh, Emily, but the EMP program is, I think, specifically designed for manufacturers is that is that true yes it is so they can people companies can reach out to me any size it doesn't matter to discuss international trade but when it comes to the emp's program specifically which is a grant-based program there are certain criteria put in place by the, by enterprise florida and also the at the federal level as well and it's uh, ideally for manufacturers it is specifically actually for manufacturers and also a uh, Florida based, Florida produced product. And it has to be at least 51% Florida produced. The company has to be in business about two years or so. And sales, I think, need to exceed a few million dollars. So that's through the EMP. But okay. if you do not trust us, then we can give you market intelligence and guidance as well. Right. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, some things that are uh, kind of uh, that that uh, you're very close to your your heart uh, in in all that you do. I want to talk uh, quickly about your book. Um, you wrote a book. Oh my uh, book. Where's my book? Yes, where's your book? Yes, um, I did. 
you you oh, wrote a book. I'm gonna get uh, to my book right now. <laughs> I Emily, I think I already have a couple copies, but that's okay. <laughs> As she's reaching behind yes, right yes. now and showing us showing her us book. her book. There you um, go. You, uh, Emily, amongst all the work that you do for the SBDC and, and uh, clients looking to expand uh, their revenue through international trade, you had time to write a book. Talk a little bit about your book, Emily. Well, it was based on my experiences with my company, Kasori. I happen to have one of those bags right here that I was talking about. We're laptop cases, tech cases, and travel bags. So that, that's our business that I do with my sister. And we, as I mentioned before about the manufacturing and all the different experiences we had, I decided the best form of therapy is to write a book where you actually share what you learn, lessons learned, mistakes made, successes, and with the intention of helping the next generation of entrepreneur uh, launch forth and build on what you did and then take it to another level as well. Okay. And how does one, what is the title of the book? The Little Girl's Guide to Entrepreneurship, What I Know Now That I Sure Wish I Knew Then. Jeez, I, I you know, Emily, I'm gonna, Emily. I, I, that could be any of us. Yeah. <laughs> could I take that uh, outline and I'll just change it to small business ownership? What I, the mistakes I made, what I knew then, and what I know now. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's a, a, a quintessential kind of little tome, if you will. But the reason why it's called The Little Girl's Guide, and I would like to just highlight that, is because my, my niece, when she was nine or 10 years old, asked me, am I too little to start a business? And from that moment, it got me thinking that so many people may think they're too little, they're too old, they're too this, they're too that. And none of those apply. If you have a vision for a business, I don't care what your age is or whatever else, definitely get moving with that vision. Yeah. So that's another part of the inspiration. And I guess uh, I, I, you, you kind of just mentioned it, but, but touch on your business too. Um, kind of tell us a little bit about your business because again, it's, it, uh, it all kind of, uh, is is relative to to what you do you had to get it manufacturers you I, I think I believe you have it manufactured overseas tell us a little bit about your business and your products okay so when I started my company was to design stylish laptop bags for women because at the late 90s there weren't many and I had to pretty much I had to learn to draw I went back to school to learn to draw um, at FIT in New York my sister went to FIT and People got, um, were interested with our first samples. We had to find sample makers. And one thing led to the next. But it's amazing how um, you have to piece all these components together. And you don't know what you need until you start going forward. And you're like, oh, I'm going to need that. Then I'm going to need this. Then I'm going to need a trademark attorney. I'm going to need this. And I'm going to need that. Mm -hmm. So it's all these cumulative things. Oh, and I'm going to have to get to China. And I'm going to have to do all those things. So you're learning as you go a lot of it. And then when you reflect like now, you're like, oh, this is what I would have done differently. This is what I could do better. And this is what I can continue to improve on going forward. So it's a whole learning experience. And particularly from the international side, I'd like to add that one of the key parts, we put the name international in our name from our incorporation. That was a part of our mindset that we are going to be a global company just starting in my bedroom. Right. And so... With that thought process, it's also about embracing the cultures of the world, not just the business things, but the culture was critical. So when we first went to China, taking the time to just learn some basics of Chinese culture goes a long, long way because they spend a lot of time whining and dining before you even visit the factory. And if you don't realize that, you'll think you're wasting time, but that's a part of how they do business. So... There are all these, all these ins, ins and outs. So I invite people to read the book. They'll learn more or come and talk with me and I'll share as well. Yeah. And talk about, you know, that's why I, I wanted you to tell a little bit of your story, because again, this is all about leveraging the experience, the knowledge, the acumen of, of, of all those team members of the SBDC. Uh, you, you know, Emily, you've heard me say uh, uh, a thousand times, uh, you know, my favorite thing to ask the team is where were you folks when I was in business, I could have used all this experience. So talk a little bit about it is about it is about leveraging all of this experience that exists within the SBDC. 
Yes, and, and, I, and I, I think people, number one, they need to know we're here. And they also need to realize, and this is, I think, one of the main things I've observed over the years, is that people feel like they already know everything they need to know. And, the pro and that's always a, a death knell because there's always more to know and always more to learn because things are always changing. So you may have been in business 20, 30, 40, 50 years and feel as if you've seen and done it all, which you may have to some degree, but there's something new that's happening that you need to know. And that's why it's important to reach out and stay connected to these resources to just be abreast of the changing tide and as things evolve. So that's, that's a really important component. Nice. Okay. Uh, Emily, listen, uh, as I said uh, early on, I, again, we really appreciate the work you do. It is such high value, um, you know, uh, really engaged work in international trade. And it's, it's just so, uh, it's such a great opportunity for so many small business owners to really expand their revenue, expand their market. Um, so we really appreciate the work you do. We appreciate the partnerships you've created um, with international trade, uh, with Enterprise Florida and and uh, Department of Commerce. And um, we just appreciate the work you do. So uh, keep it up. And again, if you're a manufacturer out there and you, you're listening to this show or you're any business, get in touch with us and have a conversation about how you can get engaged in international trade. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Tom. You know, and I think the thing that's so impressive about Emily, it is, is the fact that she's already done it. Absolutely. And yeah. she continues to deal internationally. Yeah. I think that's phenomenal. Right. All right. Thank you. With that, uh, stay tuned. Don't Thank you, Greg. Break. There's more coming at you from Small Biz Florida right here on WPSL and WSTU.